Hey Calibria fans, welcome to Raikouzen Games video. In today's episode, we will be checking out a new runecrafting event that is about to be released. Booyah! I'm really excited for this event because I think it's probably one of the coolest uh, rune events that we've ever had. Um, it's going to boost a lot of people's progress because I know that it's so difficult to farm high quality runes. Um, we get these low quality rune in the masses, but um, you know the, the good runes are few. So to help solve that problem, Calibri has gone and given us this event to turn those heap of uh, runes that didn't roll well or runes that we probably will sell uh, and, then, and then be able to convert them to something that might be useful you know it gives us a second chance but firstly I want to thank Calibria because I feel like they've actually listened to the community they've added a craft time limit in the center of the page here um, I think small qualities of life is really appreciated in events such as this so time events they should have a timer milestone events they should have a counter for example the 200 mystical summons event, um, a lot of the community felt like it would have been great if you had a little counter that showed you what mystical scroll you were on to reach that 200 uh, sacred scroll milestone. But um, I guess when they released it, they didn't have time to implement that. But they've listened to the community feedback and they have added a limit, uh, a time limit on this one. And I just hope that they continue uh, having these little qualities of life in future events. Uh, so well done and keep going. Okay, so looking at the UI of the event, you can see that on the left hand side, there's a list of uh, runes that you probably have in your inventory. And on the right hand side, it's, it's, a, it's a circle that is going to fill up as you feed it runes that you want to convert into something better. Um, you can see in the yellow text here it says craft type blessing rune which infers that you're going to be locked into one set of runes. So in this case um, they're going to convert a bunch of blessing runes and craft it into another better blessing room so let's play the clip so that he's gone and pressed the uh, search button and search down to the agile set he had doesn't have any agile sets so he's gone back to his blessing sets and chosen common um, it says one out of four two out of four three out of four four out of four and then he's able to convert them into an upgraded uh, magic blessing from from four commons and it's going to go up as the grade goes up. Um, I've prepared an infograph because, I don't know, I guess I'm the infograph guy now. <laughs> um, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to share it uh, with everyone just because I wasn't sure on the translation. So to give you the backstory of this, someone on Foie's stream had translated from the Asian servers and you know how it is when these things happen um, sometimes there's a misinterpretation sometimes there's human error sometimes when they bring stuff from the Asian servers to the English servers um, it's not exactly the same they might have tweaked a couple of things here and there so I was like um, do I still release this knowing that this may not be 100% accurate um, but after talking with a couple of people we came to the question would you rather be over prepared um, and know that if something like this is coming or would you rather not know and just be surprised and a lot of people said look man even if the numbers came out higher than what was uh, translated they just rather be prepared and I thought okay if that is the case I'm going to release it out and so that I created this I guess it does get a little bit confusing if you try to explain it to people with words. So when you've got it in a format like this, uh, I just feel like it's a little bit easier to read. Um, okay, so on the left hand side, there's input, so what you're feeding into the crafting circle, and then output is what you get in return or what you've crafted. Um, and then I've split it between the top half, which is the five star runes, and the bottom half, which is the six star runes. So if you're in the mid to late game uh, stage of the game, you probably have a bunch of 5 star and 6 star runes in your inventory already uh, and you'll be able to improve the quality of those if you're happy to convert them. So let's look at the first row. Uh, if you input 6 times 5 rare runes, you're going to get 1 heroic rune, uh, 5 star. 
Same with the heroic, same with the second row, which is six times five star heroic runes for one legendary five star rune. But if you have six, five legend runes, you can convert it to one six star heroic rune. Um, depending on how that rune rolled out, it might actually be worth it for you to have a six star rune, especially if it's a two, four, six slot with good subs. Um, so it is a chance as well. And if I haven't mentioned already, I believe that um, it gives you a random rune slot between one to six, you know, like you, you can't try to target it down to a specific rune or else everyone's going to be targeting two, four, six slots. <laughs> um, okay, so moving down to the six star runes, uh, you'll need eight rares to make one heroic and you'll need eight heroics to make one legendary rune. Um, and if those legendaries didn't turn out well, uh, you know, bad subs, you didn't want to refine it, things like that, you can convert three legendaries to get one brand new one and hope for the best. So I think that's really good because for a lot of us, we're able to get the rare runes. It's the legendaries that we're finding it difficult to get. Um, and this is one, they've given us one solution to work towards that. And if you do the maths, uh, you can convert 64 rare runes into 8 heroic runes, which equals 1 legendary. So 64 rares for 1 legendary. I, I would trade that any day. If, you know, if this wasn't an event and it was just constant, I would do that every single day. <laughs> so I guess the next question is, how do you prepare for it? Um, obvious answer, go farm as much as you can whether it be five stars or six stars, depending on what you're trying to target, depending on where you are in the game. For me, I'm gonna try target the six star runes because I wanna advance from uh, mid late game to super late game, right? But if you're early, you know, you might be happy to get a couple of uh, six star purple runes, uh, things like that. So even though we're able to craft runes, it's going to depend on RNG as well. What if the new crafted rune has bad subs? What if it lands on a, a slot that you don't want? What if it's, um, you know, hit or, or resistance slots um, that you don't need? So keep in mind that it's not going to be perfect. Uh, just because you gave away, you know, you converted eight rares doesn't mean you're going to get this epic heroic rune, right? So I foresee that, you know, you will probably do this multiple, multiple times. Um, and even if you convert, say, 600, you might end up really keeping like 10 or 15, if not less. <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's still going to depend on RNG. So my strategy is going to be volume. What is one set of runes that I can get in volume? Um, and I want it to be a good set as well. So for example, if you're a early to mid-ish um, gamer, and you can only do Colossus 10 or Colossus 12 and you're struggling with Leviathan and Hydra, I would say farm as much Colossus as you can. Um, improve the quality of your Agile sets, your attack sets, your you know counter, your wild sets, all that stuff. Um, and that will set you up in the long run to be able to con conquer Leviathan. Um, but if you're someone that's already conquered Colossus 12 quite well and you can farm Leviathan, pretty well then I think Berserk might be the way to go because Berserk universally is one of the most versatile runes in the game both PvE and PvP so in the high tier arena um, a lot of people are playing tanks and things like that getting extra turns is so powerful you know you reduce the cooldown of your skills you reduce the turn clock off debuffs on you you get another chance to attack Berserk is just one of the one of the craziest runes in the game Hydra, I would say, is more for late game players where they're trying to speed through things now. Um, you know, they have their Berserk sets, they have their Agile sets, and what they're trying to do is speed clear dungeons or speed clear arena PvP teams. So a lot of people are running um, speed team Flame Spirits in arena using either conflict sets or attack sets, but imagine Flame Spirits on, say, destruction sets, right? That would just be <laughs> absolute chaos. Immunity is also a huge thing, uh, just because if you're not able to keep up with the speed of the enemy, if you have the protection of immunity on your side, it is quite advantageous. And I foresee RTA coming um, in the future. I don't know when. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it'll be in the near future, but in the future sometime. Um, and I think immunity sets will be great for that. And of course, you also have the drops from 
your chimeras or your lair you know your prayer your unity and your conflict runes um i know a lot of people love farming lair just for the kalyanites and the conflict sets and things like that and if you um, want to improve the quality of those to become more efficient this is your chance and i think statistically um chimera seems to be dropping higher number of six star runes than you know than your dungeons so uh if you're able to farm chimeras uh i would say that's probably the safer route because you know the volume of six star runes coming in is going to be much more significant uh from my experience anyways i actually don't know what the drop rates are but it's just a gut feeling from doing you know thousands of runs of chimeras so step one deciding what rune set you'll be going for Go for volume, go for quality, go for progression of um, where you want to go with your account. Step two is obviously farming. Farm as much as you can. So obviously we're all locked to a 600 rune slot limit. If you want to expand beyond that, all you have to do is put runes or equip runes onto units that um, are in your inventory. So your max inventory is 800 units. Even if you equip, say, 600 of them, you know, 600 times 6 is a lot of runes. It's a lot of work, but, uh, I mean, if it could improve your account, um, I think it's worth it just because it takes me forever to get a legend rune just by farming. But if this event can boost me and give me more chances of getting great purple and great legend runes, um, I think that time it takes to manage all that is less than what it takes to farm uh, legend runes if that makes sense it's just you know pros and cons how, how much effort is it going to take me to get the results that i want and i think yeah i think it'll be worth it but then again i'm a bit lazy so we'll see <laughs> and i guess the next step is you know looking at your inventory and deciding what runes that you want to keep and what runes that you'll probably fodder off if you want to keep it lock them um, or else you might accidentally sell them and that would be pretty bad um, but with runes that are still zero and has potential let's say this agile set with a speed sub uh, the max possibility is two plus sixes so that will be 16 and you can see that it's already hit attack um, now the max possible speed for this rune is plus 10 within my collection of runes um, isn't good enough anymore so I'm just gonna stop there and mark it as a rune that I'm happy to sell and then I would continue this until I've marked off most of my runes and that way I'm not wasting time during the event um, deciding if I want to keep these runes and you know upgrading and things like that so this rune has a possibility and it no longer has a possibility <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to you know fodder this off as well and maybe like a rune like this 21% um, crit damage some speed some attack some crit rate and it's a wild set so I think I want to lock that I think I want to I don't want to accidentally fodder it because that's pretty good so step two is making space which involves finding out uh, what runes you want to keep and what runes you don't want to keep the ones that you do want to keep lock them the ones that you don't want to keep put them on your monsters to make more space or keep them in your inventory so that you can keep farming all right guys so that brings us to the end of the video i hope you enjoyed the content um hopefully it helps i know that i said that um that infograph might not be 100 percent accurate but I really do prefer it that you guys be ready for something like this, especially, you know, given the thing that we we need as much runes and as much preparation for things like this. So even if the numbers are wrong, I apologize, um, but at least it gives you an image of what it's going to be, uh, as what it's going to be like when it does come out. So I uh, hope you appreciate that. And if you do, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe because I'm going to be doing a bunch of these Calibria Crypto Guardian content and you probably don't want to miss out, right? <laughs> All right, until next time. Peace out, guys. Let's go. Give me plus 12. Not bad, not bad. <laughs>